so Fedora doesn't at all ever mention anything about HEI video drivers that, that I can get these and I can install them and I can use them. Okay. When I do go look at the at the web page about that, when I look at the web page even about Adobe Flash, um, there are words to discourage the user from trying it and there's a bit of politics that's thrown in there. Now, uh, I'm not against the Free Software Foundation at all, or their goals, or what they want to do. But right now, I'm talking from the perspective of a new user. And I'm also, I also have in mind that maybe it wouldn't be so bad to let some of these proprietary drivers land in the computer, because more people will end up actually using Linux. And uh, as a result, where they would have never heard of the Free Software Foundation before, they might actually get some exposure. And as they get experience, they may be able to handle using a distribution like Red Hat that doesn't put those proprietary drivers in it. Or they may make that moral choice, but without that exposure, they don't even have that chance. And it goes right back in line with what Shuttleworth was saying, that he makes the environment more user-friendly to give the GNU project its, its, its exposure. They may not contribute as much code to, to GNOME, but they may in other areas that GNOME isn't counting and they're just focusing on GNOME. Um, <laughs> but at the end of the day, the more people you, you can get to use Linux and to stay in Linux land, the better shot later on you have of them sticking with it when times are rougher, and the better shot you have of them actually caring about the goals and, and ideals of, of, of the GNU project. And so, in that sense, that's the extent that I'll support the Free Software Foundation within practicality. And so when I try to install SUSE 11.2 and the ATI drivers have been out for prior to 11.2, free, you know, without cost to SUSE to put them in there, they didn't do it because of some but because the political environment would make it a little controversial for them to just put them in there to start with. That's going to drive people away. And so, you know, I look at Novell's financial statements and I could see that the uh, division of Novell that sells um, netware, after all the administrative costs and other things are, are allocated to it, makes the profit. 34 of the 50 million, but the uh, the part that uses Linux is, is at a is at a four point four million or four point five million dollar loss. And uh, you know for, when it gets bigger as you go for the nine months instead of the three months, it's fourteen million. You know, there's six you know, you take the taxes out of the results of operations you get your 55 million that they made. So the Linux desktop isn't making any money. Well, well, why is that? Well, maybe if they put the proprietary drivers in their distribution in, in 11.2, they wouldn't lose four or five people that tried it out at that point. And maybe, you know, not four or five, there's probably thousands. And then out of the thousands, there may be 20 that based on their experience with 11.2, if it went right and the install went well, and they didn't have that black screen when they tried the install, <coughs> might think it might be worthwhile to buy the Suzy Linux Enterprise desktop, which is the only revenue source they have for that division, SMOP. And, uh, you know, they might just get enough people in over time, things build. They won't lose money in that division, but right now it costs them money to, to run the Linux division. It doesn't make them money. If they drop if they drop that division, they'd be better off. <laughs> Theoretically. But on the other hand, as long as it's not horrifically unprofitable, it does offset some of their other costs they wouldn't be able to otherwise get rid of. 
but they could always exercise some other kind of choice. They're certainly not ready to go out of business. I don't know why they would be seen as a target to be bought. <laughs> Unless people think they're underpriced, I, I don't know. So that's that's the business from the business perspective. It's just I just want to be able to have choice that's good for prices and bring the prices down. If there's just it is just as a, if there's a, another operating system that's just as viable as Windows to use in your business, Windows might cost two hundred instead of two fifty, or <laughs> you know, right? That drives prices down. The second thing is is that Linux may end up being less expensive to produce, all things being equal, um, as long as the volume of Linux users is high enough that are buying these box sets. The fixed cost of, of making the, the the DVDs and the books w would go down, and then it's just the only real cost that would make a difference on producing the software, of course, is the development cost. And since you know they Linux is a kernel made by somebody else, but Microsoft has to maintain their own kernel. That's going to be the cost difference. That'll give the Linux people a competitive advantage. That was the and that was the main motive behind the the large stock increase when Red Hat came out, um, the anticipated profits for future profits. That's that's what, what that was. And then when the price went back down, they saw that those profits never came to fruition. That's why it went down. Okay. Um, so anything that we, anything the distributions do to, to make it harder for the end user to use their their distribution, and it's for political reasons, only hurts their bottom line. And it's not it's too simple to say that you can't make money in the the desktop business, uh, the Linux desktop business. You, you you might be able to. I mean, the numbers are close. The numbers aren't huge. I mean, a loss for three months. Well. I'd say that their their loss for the year for offering Linux is going to be about 20 million. But if they were able to to produce a, a, a good ex, good end user experience every single time someone tried to install and momentum actually built up, to me I see Linux is in the state of a fragment or enough errors happen. Or, Errors on installs or problems, major problems happen often enough, every so often, to drive just enough people away, so the moment momentum never builds up in it. Grub right now is a reason. You uh, basically the anybody that wants to dual boot or uh, multi boot. Is going to be pissed off at Grub and and, and want to leave, or maybe they, they want to try Haiku, maybe they want to try FreeBSD. That's a small portion of the Linux users. Most people probably just dual boot, but nonetheless, they're going to drive those people away now. Anybody that has an ATI card, an Intel card, or an NVIDIA card has been driven away for a very very long time, um, and. That that's that's a big problem. You you, you can't have. And that's a. I'd say those are probably the major video driver, ma video card makers out there. If you get those three to get so, you're pretty much by not putting proprietary video drivers in our installers. When a VESA won't work, and I know it didn't work in my 11.2 for this new HPE light that I have, and I know it didn't work for that older computer down there for SUSE 11.1. Um, people aren't going to come back, and then now we got five major distributions, and you know now Ubuntu is doing is doing better than SUSE. It used to be that SUSE would do better than Red Hat, but there's still going to be people that are going to try Red Hat, and they're not going to try SUSE, or they're going to try Red, you know, Fedora, and they're not going to try Ubuntu. Well, those people that tried Fedora, they might see this as a reason not to come back. To believe, you know, and then that momentum doesn't build up, and the revenues don't grow, and you got your loss. There's your loss right there. <laughs> the Neville financial statements, Red Hat, I know by reading their financial statements, they didn't make money. I'm gonna stop.